Are you about to start coding algos in real time? Here are the five things that you need to know. If you already know the basics of per real time and have some basic understanding of programming, then you can skip this video. I know that some of you are completely new on algo trading and have never even used per real time before. This video is to ease you into that area a little bit so that we can code our algos together in a coming video. I'm going to show you the interface of per real time and the features that you will use when coding algos. This is not a course on programming, but I will quickly show you the basics of what you need to know. All right, so first of all, get your Pro Real Time installed. At the time of this recording, there is only one broker that have activated or allowed the automatic trading functionality in Pro Real Time, and that is IG. So if you're using Pro Real Time for your manual trading with another broker, uh, you will have to switch to IG. So later this year, interactive brokers will also allow for automatic trading in per real time. I mean, so, that, so that's very exciting and it means a much needed uh, increased competition on the broker market. So first of all, to get your per real time, register for a trading account at IG.com. So when you get your trading account at IG, log into your IG pages, click settings up here, go to pro real time, click enable, read through the terms and condition and click accept. So you can have multiple pro real times for multiple accounts and you have now activated pro real time for your account. Go back to your dashboard, click this uh, button here and click launch pro real time. So the first time you run pro real time, this button here will say something like install pro real time on your computer or something like that. Click that button and in five minutes you will have the software installed. Pro Real Time is the trading software that we use to code, backtest and run our algos. All those steps are done in the same software. When you start Pro Real Time for the first time, I, I recall it opening like 20 different windows at the same time. It's like they want to showcase every single functionality to their new users. They display like six different charts, a number of different lists and other useless windows. So don't be overwhelmed by that. Just close them all down except this window here. This wide window here is the main window of Pro Real Time. If you would close this down this window, the whole client would be, would be closed. So I'm just going to go through the things that we need to code and backtest and run the algos and let the other features be for now. Uh, I might do a deep dive into the other stuff in a later video. If someone is interested, uh, please let me know in the comments. Let's open up a chart. Uh, to find the right chart can sometimes be, to find the right instrument can sometimes be tricky. Uh, there's no real stringency in the naming of these instruments. Here's a list of the most common indexes and their name in per real time. Uh, but these names will vary depending on your countries. So this account is based in the UK, so all the instrument names are in English. So to open up a chart, you can use a list like this, but you can also search for the instrument. So I want to open up a Germany 40 index. And as you can see here, there are multiple instances of the same instrument. The thing that differs uh, these instances from one another is the contract size. So this instance here is Germany 40 cash with a contract size of one British pound. And the next one here is Germany 40 cash with a contract size of five euros. My general recommendation is to use smaller contract size and uh, instead uh, use a number of contracts instead of using a bigger contract size and only using one contract. So I would choose the one British pound here. So this is a chart of DAX 40 on the weekly time frame. What we see here are weekly candlesticks and here is the number of weekly candlesticks that's shown in the chart. So if we change this here from 1000 units to 2000 units, uh, we will have doubled the amount of historical data that's shown in this chart. Uh, the number of units is significant when backtesting an algo uh, as a backtest will present how your code strategy have worked in the past and the number of units chosen 
uh, will determine how long that historic period is. Okay, so an algo when started runs on a specific instrument on a specific time frame. So for example, an algo can be running on DAX40 on the daily time frame or on NASDAQ on the one hour time frame. And an algo can be started in multiple instances on a number of different indexes and time frames. And, but, but it's rare that an algo will be successful without making any adjustments for the index and the time frame. Okay, so let's create the simplest of systems. Let's create it for the daily time frame. And let's just test it for the last 1000 days. So to create a new algo, click this button down here. It will open up a window showing you all your indicators and all your systems. So here are all the indicators, here are all the indicator groups and here are all the systems. So click here and then you click new. What you need to know is that the code of the algorithm is executed only at the end of every candle. So for a daily time frame algo, the code will only execute at midnight every day. And that means that you can't build an algo that enter trades at, uh, let's say, 10 a.m. when running on a daily time frame. You, you would have to build the algo on the two hour time frame or the hourly time frame or uh, any smaller time frames uh, to achieve that. There's one exception from this, and that is the target profit level and the stop loss level, which will execute as soon as the price reaches that level. So per real time will not wait until the end of the candle to execute stop losses or profit targets. Another thing you need to know is that the code will be executed top down. And that means that the pro real time will execute the code from the top going down to the bottom. So any code that you put uh, in the bottom will be executed last and any code that you put on top will be executed uh, first. So as I mentioned, this is not a programming course, but it's not a hard language to learn. An algo doesn't have to have 200 lines of code to be successful. We, we have algos that have less than 20 rows of code. So the key here or the objective here is not for you to become an expert programmer uh, because that will not make you a successful algo developer. So. What we're going to build today is a system that enters trades every Wednesday and that will close that same trade at midnight. So here's the template which uh, ProRealTime generates for us and it's a good start. The code to enter a long trade is buy one contract at market. The code to exit a long trade is sell at market. The code to enter a short trade is sell short one contract at market and the code to exit a short trade is exit short at market. A trade can be closed and a trade can be closed by a stop loss level and a target profit level as well. So okay, so let's uh, write the code that conditions the system to enter trades when it's Wednesday. To do that, we have to write what is called an if statement and the logic of an if statement is very simple and uh, it looks like this. If if condition is true, then execute this code. If it's not true, then execute this other code and if. So this is pretty simple. For our system, we wanted the condition to be true if day of week equals Wednesday. Uh, if day of week equals three. And if we would like to change this to Monday, we would put uh, a one here. So one is for Monday, two is for Tuesday, three is for Wednesday. And if day of week equals three, then we want our entry condition long uh, to be true. So this is a variable name. The variable name can be whatever, uh, but I will call it entry condition long. If day of week is not three, then we want the entry condition long to be false. And what we do next is to add that condition to the if statement that enters trades. 
So what this code does is it will buy one contract at market if the day is uh, Wednesday and if we are not already in a long position. So when the Tuesday candle ends at midnight turning to Wednesday, the system will enter a long trade. And now we will write the exit code. We wanted the system to exit the trade at midnight. And that's the same thing as exiting the trades when it's Thursday. So that's a pretty similar condition as the entry condition. So we will copy that code. And we will say when the day of the week turns to Thursday, we want the exit condition long to be true. And if it's not Thursday, then we want the exit condition long to be false. And what we do next is we add that condition to the exit code down here. So what this code here will do is to sell at market to exit the long position if we have a long position and if the day is Thursday. So here is code for short positions, but we want this to be a long only system. So we will delete all that code. So here it is 21 lines of code. The code is now done. Let's back test it. Make sure it's the right time frame here and make sure that it's the right index here. And then you click pro back test my system. So this should go fairly quickly. It all, <laughs> it's already finished. So it was quick because we only back tested on 1000 units. Uh, depending on your account, you can test up to 1 million units. But that of course naturally will take a lot longer time. Okay, so the back test is done. Here are some statistics of the back test, which will tell you how the system have performed. We will not go into every single detail of this back test report, but the basic things that you want to look at is the total gain, which was uh, 3,601 pounds. We had a win rate of 58% and again a gain loss ratio of 1.3, meaning that the winning trades made 30% more than what the losing trades lost. We have a chart here as well on which you can uh, see the performance of the year or quarter or per month. We have a time in the market, you have the average order executed per day the max drawdown, the total number of trades, and you have a lot more if you just go through the list uh, that's up here. You can also see the performance of the system represented in an equity chart over here. One thing that I left out in this back test was the spread. The spread is uh, the transaction fee that your broker takes for every transaction, and that is every entry and every exit and it will be of big significance to the result of your system. So to add a spread to your backtest, click modify pro backtest up here, and then you add the spread to the field here. So what you should add here is your average spread of the instrument. You can see the average spread of the instrument on your broker's website. And what you should think about here is that the average spread differs depending on what time of day your system enters and exits trades. So during ordinary open hours, the spread will be lower and outside the ordinary opening hours, the spread will be higher. So the average spread for Germany for the cash is around two during ordinary open hours, but for our system that enters and exits trades only at midnight, the average spread would be something like six. In our experience, you should add 20% to your spread. It will better represent the live results of the system. Okay, so let's rerun the back test with this new spread. And as you can see, it's a big difference from the back test without the spread. Without the spread, we had a gain of uh, 3,600 euros. And now we only have a gain of uh, 2,100 euros. 13 euros. So to build a successful algo trading system, you need to use a correct spread when backtesting and coding your algos. To make a good looking backtest without the spread is a piece of cake, so please don't forget that. All right, let's start the system that we just created. Click modify pro backtest. Uh, add a name to your system. I will call it Wednesday 
going long DAX 40 daily. Click automatic trading here. Make sure that the time unit and the index is correct and click prepare for automatic trading down here. And that will open up this window. Check the system box of your newly prepared system and click start. There are a number of different fields here, but the only field that you will have to think about is this field here. And that is the number of contracts that you want to run your algo with. In, in other words, that's your position size. It's necessary that you add the same number here as you added in the code, which was one. So I'll add one here and then I will click activate trading system. If I want to run the system with two contracts, I will have to go back to the code. I will change the value here from one to two. I will prepare a new system for automatic trading. I will check the box of the system. I will click start and I will set two here and click activate trading system. Your systems are now started and they will enter their first trades on, their, on the first coming Wednesday. And the algorithm are now running on the pro real time cloud server. So you can now close down your software. But one thing you will have to do every X number of days is to extend the lifetime of your algos of your systems. And you do that by clicking this button down here called extend. So this is a safety measure in pro real time that will close down all active systems. If you haven't uh, clicked the system in a while. If you go into the pro real time settings, you can change it so that you only have to click the button every 100 days. And that's the four points. You have learned the absolute basics of pro real time. We have built a simple trading system. We have back tested it and we have started it. And that's what you need to know right now to proceed to the next video in which we will build a bit more complex systems. The ideas that we covered in the last video. Our fifth point is for those who want to speed up their algo development. If you're a premium subscriber of our learning program, you can now watch our short tips and tricks video of pro real time. It's a video on short commands, shortcuts and settings that will speed up your algo development going forward. As I mentioned before, algo development is a numbers game. You will test a lot of ideas and if you could speed up that process by cutting just a few minutes of every idea, then you will save a lot of time. So if you want to watch that video, go to prorealalgos.com forward slash learning and sign up for the premium program. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye.